How you doing? I'm Hassan and I'm an American chauffeur. Okay, in this particular video, you know, I'm going to admit that when I first started bringing this information, I didn't actually know it was going to go real deep, but I know how I am, right? That's one of the things that you actually learn from doing ride share, if you're serious anyway, if you're serious about learning yourself. Now, if you just, you know, if you're serious about other things, maybe you'll get that. Uh, but I was just very serious about learning myself, I guess because of where I came from and my background. So, uh, I basically bring my experience to you and uh, I'm going to admit, which I have said it before, Uber and Lyft, they screwed up this thing called ride share. They really screwed it up. Now, they might be the companies that use or we call, you know, by these different companies, we call it ride share, right? There's a difference between ride share and Uber and Lyft, okay? Because in this video, I really want to give you some ideas that will help you stay safe within and without, because it's the within staying safe, huh? that will help you not be afraid to raise your self-image in the way you see yourself because most of these drivers just don't see themselves straight. I'm just telling you now. You get as offended as you like. But some of the ways we get treated is because the way we treat ourselves. So anyway, before I go real deep on that, let me tell you the difference between Uber and Lyft and Rideshare. Uber and Lyft are companies that provide the rideshare service. But as we can see, that when you work for Uber and you work for Lyft, rideshare does not work. It will not, it doesn't work. It just don't work. Because you're looking, because you're looking to be employed. And this is not a job. Ride share is not a job. Okay? If you do it like it's a business, you'll get the benefit. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Let me be careful. Let me be cool and be careful. I don't, you know, I don't care about you getting offended. I do care about me making sure that I'm explaining it as clear as I possibly can to you. Okay? When I started doing it, I never started doing it as I worked for Uber and Lyft. Okay, and I'm glad I didn't do it that way. Okay, because when I started, people were all proud and everything, wearing them Uber t shirts and lift jackets because I guess they was paying more then. That was back in, that was back in 2017, so maybe they was paying more. Who was proud wearing the Uber, you know, whatever, right? Proud of themselves, right? I, at, even, even though I seen that, I said, wait a minute, man. They advertise this like it's your own business, some benefit wearing that damn shirt. Is it a benefit wearing that Uber t-shirt? Am I going to make more money because of it? Y'all advertise it was like it's your own business. That's what I'm looking for. That's how I'm going to do it. I do not work for y'all. All right? Okay. And that set me free that when the, when, because when they cut them rates, them t-shirts disappeared. See, I know some people who was doing, this is back then, some of their videos are still up. I don't know their names or nothing because they fell by the wayside as soon as they cut the race. 
<laughs> and every time they cut the rates, my 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 pay went up. Cause it meant I had to hustle harder. When you're doing when you're doing Uber and Lyft, you looking for you you're looking for, you must be looking for some. Okay, I feel you. Pay me more money. Well, I was looking for an opportunity. So you get as offended as you like. You can be in one of those markets where they ain't working for you. There ain't no reason to try to pull me down or anybody else who's making this thing work, pull them down. All right? Okay. So y'all who working for Uber and Lyft 10 to 1, you're part of the 80%. All right? So ride share is a wonderful experience. A wonderful experience where you can discover yourself, you can discover your business acumen. Uh, you know, go ahead, don't be afraid of yourself. Get your LLC if this is working for you, if that's where you want to go with it. Uh, you don't have to get your LLC. You can say, well, actually, I'm just doing this ride share thing, but actually, you know, actually, I'm doing something else like a restaurant or whatever, some other enterprise that I'm working in. Go ahead, be brave. Be bold. Look. Okay, here, here, here. By the time over here in 2018, okay, 2018, I finally got a good solid 4.9 rating. I had gotten a different car. It was Hyundai Ionic. A great car. Love it. Love it. It had the right trunk space, everything for doing X. Okay, for doing X. It's beautiful for doing X. But at that time, I knew I was rolling good, looking good, carrying myself well. You know, I wasn't a chauffeur. I wasn't wearing, you know, but I, you know, had this thing about service going. I had this thing about feeling really good about myself because at that particular time, I knew clearly, and I was very proud to be a ride share driver. You get as offended as you like. <laughs> huh? All right. All right. The beauty of this thing is that you buy yourself, okay, in that car. You, the passengers you're picking up, those, your, those just your clients or whatever they're making, they're giving you the money, whatever, you're doing them a service. All right? You work for Uber and Lyft, you're thinking more about what they mistreating me because they are. See, but you just got to get out of this thing. You see, I wasn't in it no more than two damn years. Doggone it. All right, so you are not stuck. But I want to get to the real, some of the real meat of this. It's because of my time running out and I got all fired up and wound up and everything. Okay, so we understand the definition between that I, that I have for the definition that worked for me of the difference between ride share and um, working for Uber and Lyft. One's a job, one is not. Working for Uber and Lyft is a job, so you get, you get the bullshit. The other is you're doing it as a business, okay? Uh, now, Uber and Lyft, working for them, it's a pure kill zone. Damn near everything about it's a damn kill zone. These passengers getting in and out your car with that mess they get in out that we lie about, that we won't say nothing about, that disrespect, and then we lie to each other and say it don't bother you because you feel like you trapped. Okay, that's to kill, purposely kill your spirit because them people are jealous and envious of you, man. Is that why you keep your car dirty? Why you don't keep it clean? Because you don't want the passenger pulling you down? You don't want to get that, uh, that ignorance they get in your car with pulling on you? One of the things, don't pick nobody up unless you got a 4.8 rating and start pulling yourself up and being proud of, proud of the potential that you got as a human being if you don't see the potential as a ride share drive, right? Because you're doing it and you ain't going to do nothing else, huh? 
What's going to happen when the car starts breaking down? Huh? Okay, look. Um, so there's also the kill zone the where you could physically get killed. And in Atlanta, uh, some of those areas I'm going to kind of like uh, point out right now, right quick, uh, and mess around. Okay, look. Maybe the most important thing is that what's happening is your spirit being killed. You just wake up in the morning, jump out there. So you get in your car, smelling like sugar frosted flakes and milk. Cause hey, you know you don't want. Hey, you'd rather had a passenger. Just hey, you just like the rest of eighty percent. The rest of eighty percent out there, you really don't care that much. And those of you, if you're getting offended by what I say, then you need to look at, do you have a clean car? Are you dressing well, keeping yourself up? Are you making excuses? Are you scared to really step up to the beauty of who you really are? Huh? Start doing this damn thing like a business, man. Now, I know some of y'all want a business look like it was from some third world country or something like that. That's, you know, that's what you do. These videos I make, so like and subscribe. These videos I make are for, the, for, the, for those who are, say, maybe, they definitely in the top 10%. Because if you're in the top 10, 20% or whatever like that, you, you're doing some things and you should be proud of yourself. Especially if you like what you're doing, man. Don't let this damn thing be a kill zone to you. Doggone it. Okay, look. In Atlanta, Georgia, the things, anything that's, uh, I think it's the west side or north side drive, there could be issues over there. You get physically killed, right? You get physically murdered over there. Um, there are some of the wealthy areas of Atlanta. They're physically, I mean, they go out there, you know, I mean, it's almost like you'd be lynched or whatever if you don't do what they ask you or whatever okay um i'd be like in that uh you know it's a wealthy area like a morning like uh what they call that emory morningside area please be careful over there uh they might have money but you know they ain't got no problem with you know dis disrespecting the hell out you in the most ugliest way very in a very violent way the um, um, in Buckhead, that's the neighborhood where I'm very familiar with. I, uh, I live. In fact, I live in that area. But uh, you know, yeah, yeah, no problem. You, you know, you have to duck and dodge bullets sometimes. And all of this, the kill zone times, the kill zone times, are from nine o'clock p.m to 5 o'clock a.m. from 9 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock a.m. I'm just throwing that out quick because it's just some technical stuff. Uh, and then those little areas, you may know more. You may know more. Uh, myself, I do the black. And the areas I gave you is bad for the black. If you do the black, and the, because you're in the neighborhoods where people got money, yeah, uh-huh, Buckhead, out there in that other area where I told you about here in Atlanta. So there's a way to even get through that. If you do the black, open your own company and start doing, start uh, uh, be a private chauffeur. Oh, this is what I wanted to damn sure want to tell you this right now. If you, if you do black and you a chauffeur and you do an Uber or Lyft black and you a chauffeur, quit dressing down, man. Carry yourself like a chauffeur. You earned it. You be, be proud of yourself. Huh? Huh? All right? Don't dress down for these people. Just because that 80% dress down, keep a dirty car, because, well, hey, we just, we, we trying to do it for money. You want to do it for money, do it for service, and the money will come to you. All right? You get as offended as you like. Huh? 
Well, I'm tired of people out here getting hurt, us not being able to practice our real profession, huh? Because we got to tie down to uh, these passengers who are jealous and envious of us, even those of you on Uber Black. I mean, on Uber X. So if you're on Black, yeah, they jealous of you. They're, you know, please. Um, doing Uber X and doing regular Lyft. These people, man, these people, they jealous of you, man. Be worth being jealous of. And even let your damn friends go too. But anyway, anyway, I got a little bit too excited here. I don't think so, but maybe I did. Um, one of the things that uh, I want you to know for sure, of course, of course, this is going to be some housekeeping now. I want you to like and subscribe. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, and... I'm building the I'm building the platform. It's a you know just a regular limousine service platform, but it's here in Atlanta. The focus is going to be on safety and respect and mutual respect, and it works like a charm because I'm already you know doing it. Uh, I'm pushing further out there. I'm getting deeper. I'm going as deep as I can. I'm doing it on purpose. If you are a chauffeur, you can be have any of those necessary certifications. You can be PAC certified. You can be Gig Rocket certified. You can be St. Regis certified. Chauffeur, all right? You also need to have your chauffeur license. Your chauffeur, you know what I mean, if you're here in Atlanta, chauffeur endorsed license. And of course, uh, have have the vehicle with your LM tag. It doesn't matter to me if you got a uh, stretch. Give me a, get in touch with me at I Drive Atlanta GA at gmail.com. If you have a sedan right now, I'm very much interested in sedans. Uh, people who have sedans. Uh, if you have a sedan uh, that that qualifies as a limousine, um, get in touch with me at idriveatlantaga at gmail.com. If you have an SUV and you're a chauffeur, you understand everything I'm saying because I'm only wanting people to understand I don't need not to poop but leave. Okay? Then get in touch with me. Get in touch with me. Um, at idriveatlantaga at gmail.com. If you're a dispatcher, if you're a salesperson, if you're anywhere within the transportation industry, the limousine, especially luxury limousine industry, okay, and you're interested in working with me, then get in touch with me at idriveatlantaga at gmail.com, purposely building a company where, because even with some limo companies, your ass don't be safe, all right? Yes, don't be safe. So uh, get in touch with me. Uh, uh, if you, if you uh, want to help me to build, if you want to help me to build, uh, you want to throw me something to help me to build, a donation or whatever to help me to build, uh, the size of the donation can, can also depend on the type of whatever type of ride that you want. So it ain't like you're going to be giving, you ain't going to get nothing in return. So, uh, if you like to donate and you live in the Atlanta area, then your donation will be matched with a uh, airport transfer or a reduced rate or something like that. Uh, and that would really help me out to help me get this thing built as soon as I possibly can. So all the support that I've gotten, I'm very thankful for it. So, so I want you to like and subscribe. And uh, until the next video, drive safe and drive with confidence.